There's two sides to every story, but sometimes, no matter how you tell it, you still come back to the same conclusion. In 1997, the Carolina Panthers used a first round pick on wide receiver Ray Carew. By 1999, dude was found in a motel parking lot hiding from police in the trunk of a car. Till this day, Ray Carew denies the widely accepted story of what led him to the trunk of that vehicle. But it's a story so dark that even a person who was capable of doing it probably wouldn't want to own up to it. Mama wanted to stop that shot. I made money doing that. I was following my This is the story of Ray Carruth, one of the darkest stories I've chosen to tackle on this channel. I try to put these stories together and deliver them like tales of characters from a fiction novel, but I never lose sight of the fact that these are real people. I want to tell the story as raw as I feel it when I read through these, but I also want to show a level of respect to the people involved. This particular story is a tightrope I've avoided for a long time, but today, I'm finally ready to walk it. Cue the wang. Real quick before we jump in, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor, DraftKings. So football season is kicked off. Teams are breaking down film right now, getting ready for the next game. While teams are working on the new game plan, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is drawing up a game-winning play for all their new customers. All new customers need to do is sign up using promo code FLIMLO, bet $5 on any team to win before the game kicks off, and you'll receive an additional $200 in free bets if your team wins. That's right, new customers who bet at least $5 on any team to win their next game will get an additional $200 if that team wins plus with same game parlays you can combine multiple bets from the same game to give yourself a shot at even bigger winnings all season long now for those in the state where sports betting isn't available yet don't forget about DraftKings daily fantasy where they've been innovating even more ways to win money this season DraftKings has been around for a while so you know your funds are safe and can be withdrawn whenever so download the DraftKings sports app now New customers use promo code FLIMLO for an additional $200 in free bets if their team wins after placing a $5 pregame wage. That's promo code FLIMLO, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Shout out to DraftKings once again for sponsoring the video. Without further ado, let's jump back in. Mm. When Ray Carruth was 14 years old, on the verge of adolescence, his mom and stepdad split up, leaving Ray's mom to take care of him and his sister alone. Dude took the sports naturally, but struggled in other areas. He was an intelligent kid, but misguided. And in this story, that's gonna become a trend. As a high school sophomore, Ray's future in athletics was looking bright. Dude shined on the track, the basketball court, and you already know on the football field. But his GPA at a 2.0 was dangerously close to keeping him away from the one thing he excelled in. But dude was far from incapable. He buckled down under the threat of not being able to play sports and got his GPA up to a 3.1 by his senior year. Dude was a smooth talker. He knew how to manipulate a situation to ultimately get what he wanted. An extremely valuable skill, but one that could be dangerous when it falls into the wrong hands. He accepted an athletic scholarship offer to the University of Colorado. And check this out, Dude pursued a double major in English and Education and was named an Academic All-American before he even started shining on the field. But a student athlete has to manage three lives, their life as an athlete, their life as a student, and their personal slash social life. Ray Carruth was doing an amazing job in two of them. He was doing great in the classroom and his time was coming on the field. But his personal life, even at such a young age, was already a mess. And dude would soon start to establish a track record that would later contribute to his conviction. When he was still a sophomore at Colorado, Ray Carruth had his first kid by a woman named Michelle Wright who was still back in California. But he didn't really seem to want much to do with raising a kid. Shortly after his first son was born, Ray went into his junior season in college 
where he had a breakout year. In 11 games, dude caught 53 passes for 1,008 yards and 9 touchdowns, averaging 19 yards per reception. All of a sudden, the NFL was within his grasp. It was during that time that he met Amber Turner, a lady who would later become a key witness in the trial. Karuf would follow his breakout season with a slightly better senior year, and after that, NFL scouts were sold. A double major academic All-American who was now an athletic All-American as well? NFL teams was like, sign me up. When the 1997 NFL draft rolled around, Ray Carew didn't have to wait long as the Carolina Panthers selected him in the first round, 27th overall. Now, according to the story, Amber Turner initially moved to Charlotte with Ray for his rookie season with the Panthers, maybe providing some familiarity to the NFL rookie. And the playing field looked familiar as well, as Carew had a solid rookie season in the league. 44 receptions for 545 yards and 4 touchdowns, not bad for a rookie, especially for the time period. Now following his rookie year, Carew took Amber back to Colorado where they visited together for a while. But when Ray came back to Charlotte, dude came back solo. He got back to Carolina thinking he made a clean getaway, but apparently before dude left Colorado, he got Amber Turner pregnant. Amber Turner said that her relationship with Ray Carew was a good one. She said that during the relationship, dude was, quote, as sweet as can be when dealing with her. But when she told them over the phone that she was now pregnant, everything changed and dude flipped out. Here's a direct quote. He said, I ain't gonna have no more kids with somebody I ain't gonna be with. Don't make me send somebody out there to kill you. You know I'll do it. That escalated fast, huh? More than that in a second, we almost to that point in the story. But speaking of story, Ray Carruth was actually somewhat of a storyteller himself. According to an article printed in the Denver Post back in 1999, Ray was, quote, a self-described daydreamer. He's constantly scripting stories that he later would test on teammates. And the next part of the statement is extremely eerie based largely on one detail. Quote, his favorite right now is one he's titled acceptance. An alcoholic father causes the death of his all-American son in a car accident. He and his wife later have two more sons, one who is mentally handicapped and another who is gay. For the ending, wait for the movie. Or just wait for real life. Crazy. The similarities are striking, as Ray either directly, according to most, or indirectly, according to Ray, nearly killed his own son in a car, but kills his son's mother instead. And now his son, thanks to Ray's actions, has to live with an abnormality. And the most bizarre part of the whole thing is that this article was printed years before Ray Carruth even met Sherika Adams. After returning back to Charlotte alone, Ray Carruth would eventually meet Sherika Adams. And the nature of their relationship is somewhat foggy as it's been represented in two different ways. The initial story presented Miss Sherika as a serious girlfriend, while Carruth has heartlessly gone out of his way to insist that he barely knew her last name. His lawyer has come out and said that he misspoke and meant that he actually just didn't know how to spell her last name. But her last name is Adams, so. The thing about dude making that statement is that it wouldn't have helped his case at all. As a matter of fact, not knowing her well and getting her pregnant actually makes it seem more likely that he would have pulled off what he was accused of pulling off. So to go out of your way to say that about a woman who was violently gunned down because of you is actually cruel on a level that only makes dude look even worse. But either way, both sides agree that Ray and Sherika dated in some capacity and hooked up on multiple occasions. Like both of the other two women we've spoken of in this video, Sherika would eventually become pregnant with Ray's child, and we all know with this dude, that's where the trouble starts. But why exactly was this dude so against having more kids despite continuing to impregnate women? Ray Carew was a good player, but early in his career and injuries were already stacking up. He secretly worried that his career would be cut short due to this, which may help explain why he was so averse to having kids and being forced to pay more child support. Year two didn't look so good. Dude broke his foot and missed most of the season. And when he came back, he had some crucial drops and seemed to already be on a downward trend in the league. 
even getting benched at one point. After suffering yet another injury, dude was on his heels. He hadn't taken care of the $3.7 million signing bonus he got and a second contract was looking unlikely. I have to assume this played a big role in his aversion to pay child support, but again, if you that against having kids, then make a product designed to help with that. According to this Sports Illustrated article originally posted in 2012, by the time he met Sherika Adams, Ray's first son by Michelle Wright in California was already four years old. And according to the article, Ray had never even sent dude a birthday gift. Also, according to the article, Ray didn't provide any form of child support until mandated to do so by the courts years later. And even after he signed for three and a half million dollars and the judge ordered him to pay $5,550 per month, Ray decided to use his skill of persuasion to go and meet with Michelle Wright. He was able to talk her into accepting half that amount along with the promise that dude would become a better dad and spend more time with his kids. So he made that promise and then swiftly broke it at which point she called him pissed off. They got into an argument over the phone and dude told her not to be surprised if she got into a car accident but later he said he was just joking. Years later in court, Amber Turner, who Ray was dating at the time he threatened the mother of his first kid, she testified that she overheard dude talking on the phone saying he had people out in California who would take out both his son's mother and his son so he wouldn't have to pay her. Maybe that was a joke too? So we can see that dude either has the darkest sense of humor of all time or that thoughts of pulling off that exact crime he was later accused of had been flowing through his head for years. Eight months had passed since Sherika Adams became pregnant. She only had one month to go. Sherika was said to have been living life at a fast pace. She sold real estate by day, but Ray knew her from a night job, and she also danced at the Diamond Club. So Ray and Sherika end up getting together, but had very different futures in mind. Sherika wanted to eventually be married and have a family, and when asked how many kids she wanted, she said, quote, a whole football team worth of kids. Meanwhile, we know Ray's outlook on having more kids of his own. This relationship was never gonna work. Ironically, on Mother's Day, 1999, Sherika called her mom and told her she was pregnant. It was something the two had dreamed about for years. But whether she realized it or not, the circumstances in reality were more of a nightmare. So at some point, Sherika tells Ray that she's pregnant and predictably, Ray said get rid of the baby, but she refused. Now at this point, the story branches off into two different directions. Ray and his lawyer's story, then Sherika and the actual gunman himself. Ray's side of the story goes like this. After he backed out of the drug deal where he would finance a large amount of marijuana for the gunman, gunman then shot Sherika out of rage. Ray initially said he wasn't even at the scene of the crime but never established a concrete alibi for his whereabouts. And years later, Ray's lawyer admitted that Ray was indeed at the scene of the crime but he says that he took off in fear, leaving Sherika and his unborn son behind and essentially lied because quote, he's not particularly proud of that. It's not a sort of heroic thing to do. Big football player, you know, running but that's what he did. His lawyer says that's what Ray told him in confidence way back when the case was going on. So okay, now we know he was there, he did witness the shooting, and we know he left without so much as even checking on the woman who was carrying his baby. So if Sherika hadn't showed the strength that only a mother could find in a moment like this to hang on long enough to call 911, also she could save her kid, the shooting probably wouldn't have even been reported until the next morning. But the gunman told a different story, one that's even worse, and more importantly, one that aligns with Sherika's 911 call. So on the call, she said Ray blocked her car in and someone pulled up and shot her. She even said right then that she believed Ray had something to do with it. Just based on the way everything played out, it felt like an absolute setup. So the gunman said Karuf hired him early on, but he said he strung Karuf on for a while. He said Ray told him to meet he and Sherika after a Lamaze class and to jump and attack them. 
and we all know he had one goal in mind. But the gunman doesn't show up, and after several more failed attempts, they finally hatch the movie night plan. Switching to Sherika's point of view, she goes to meet the father of her unborn son for a date. According to the story, and this is another bizarre detail, they went to go see a movie called The Bone Collector. A 1999 movie starring Denzel Washington and Angelina Jolie and it's essentially a movie about a serial killer. So they watch that damn movie get out of the theater around midnight. At that point Sherika calls her roommate and asks her to straighten up a little bit. There had been a change of plans. Now Ray was planning to go back home with Sherika but sadly she never actually makes it there. They leave the theater and she follows Ray out. At some point when they were driving, Ray comes to a random abrupt stop. Sherika, who's following behind him, now has to slam on the brakes as well and she's blocked in behind Ray. Switching back to the gunman's account, he says Ray had him follow the two cars when they left out. And when he slammed on the brakes, that was the gunman's cue. So he pulls up next to Sherika in that moment. He says he fires one shot in Fort Moore. He and Ray drive in opposite directions, fleeing the scene of the crime. And according to the story, that's how Ray Karouf attempted to solve his problem of having to pay more child support. One of the coldest, most evil things I've ever heard. In one last heroic effort to save her child, Sherika managed to call 911. Ambulance actually makes it to her and an emergency C-section would save the child. But the 70 minutes between the shooting and the C-section would cause lifelong brain damage for young Chandler Lee. One week later, dude was arrested and charged with attempted murder and other felonies. He was released on $3 million bond, but was also released from his NFL contract. From there, he went into hiding but was found in the trunk of a car outside a motel in Tennessee. He was actually found not guilty of first degree murder, which could have gotten him the death penalty. And some say thanks to the arrogance of the state, they were so confident that they would get him on first degree murder that they didn't even bother charging him with second degree murder, which could have tacked more time on the conspiracy charge that he was eventually convicted on. So to be clear, Ray Carruth was found guilty of conspiracy to commit murder and he served 18 years and 11 months in prison for his crimes. The gunman himself got 40 to 50 years for the murder of Sherika Adams and many believe the reason Ray Carruth didn't get more time is due to the unreliability and unpredictability of the gunman himself. Apparently Du already had a violent past and his antics in court painted him as someone whose words you had to take with a grain of salt. So if Ray did hire him, he was a smart guy so he could have even considered this early on. Knowing his alibi that the gunman just snapped would be believable because dude was off his hinges. But over the years, dude hasn't helped change the perception of himself. Some may even say he's made it worse. In a letter he wrote in 2018, shortly before his release from prison, Ray Carruth went out of his way to attack Sherry's mother who raised his son while he was in jail. In the letter, he initially thanks her, but that quickly turns into an angry berating of the woman whose daughter he either had murdered or failed to protect. And the fact that it's his fault either directly or indirectly that her daughter isn't here to raise her own child. It's just like the nerve of this dude attacking this lady as if she hasn't been through enough. Chancellor Lee Adams is the son of Ray and Sherrick, and cerebral palsy has complicated his life. But thanks to Sherika's mom, his grandmother, Chancellor experienced love all his life in his recently graduated high school, but due to his condition, he'll need living assistance for the rest of his life. If this was a fiction novel, maybe it ends with a happy family and a second generation pro athlete, or at least a functioning co-parenting situation with an imperfect dad who leans into his redeeming qualities. But throughout history, reality is often dark. Stories we need to tell from time to time to better appreciate the positive ones. You gotta squeeze the good vibes out of every story you can. Cause sometimes you gotta tell a story so damn dark that it's hard to appreciate the blessings that came out of it. But like I said in the beginning, man, no matter how you tell it, no matter how you slice it, the constant remains that a young woman was gunned down over some petty bullshit and a young man had his life altered forever this kid had never had an opportunity to a meet his mom and b have a normal life so let's appreciate every wholesome sports tale we come across from every outlet on any platform from anybody we don't even care we need the good vibes bring them because in some of these stories at the end of the day 
everybody loses. 